In this video, I want to show how to debug end-to-end -end system tests that run in Docker containers with Quarkus. I already recorded a video course that is available for free where you can see how to do efficient enterprise testing. And I recently also uploaded a video how to do a remote development mode in uh, Docker uh, with Quarkus. And now I want to show you a more end-to-end -end example how to actually um, connect to and debug end-to-end -end tests that run locally in a system test setup. So if you have a look at the course, you already might get an um, idea to uh, what I will do here. And my setup is uh, roughly as follows, that I have a coffee shop application. That is my application under test that I also want to actively develop and change. So this runs in a development mode, but it runs in a Docker container. Why? Because I want a setup here that is closer to a production environment where the networking and the connection um, also uses some networks and not just local host uh, in order to access a database and an external system. I use a mock server for this barista system here and then in my system test environment I can control and mock the system. And I also have the connection for my sources locally in my local host that connect to this development mode where I quickly can change something and see the changes being reflected. So what I will do um, here, I will start up my, um, my environment in this case, I just use some bash scripts because honestly, that is the uh, most pragmatic way uh, for me here using local um, development setups. Uh, but basically what I want to do, I start Docker containers and sp especially I start Quarkus in this remote dev mode. I could equally well use Docker Compose or even use a Kubernetes setup locally, for example, using Minikube or Minishift. And in this case, I start, well, my database with Docker. I start this barista um, backend, but actually I run Wiremock, which is a mock server technology here. And then I run my application um, by building something from this uh, development Docker file that is similar to what I shot, showed in the last video um, and start this up as well. What's important, I also this time will publish the debug port 5005. So that is available uh, via, uh, via localhost. And then I wait until uh, this starts up and then immediately I also do, I can do this right now, run development uh, environment, then locally, that is now on my uh, host machine, I run Quarkus remote dev in order to connect to the development Quarkus that runs in the container, because then I have the con a connection to my source code and I can uh, debug uh, as well by connecting to, to this URL. Now, what I can do uh, once that is up and running, I uh, go, can go to a local host and connect to my application here that just will, um, in this case, end up at this root resource where it returns this um, um, hypermedia-like uh, link uh, setup where it just says something like uh, hello world with a bunch of links. So you already assume that I can, of course, uh, change this with instead of hello world, write something else. But that is not the interesting thing. I showed that already. Um, so this just means that my Docker container, my application inside the Docker container runs in this uh, development mode and I can connect to it. But more um, in, uh, importantly, I can also run debug. So I can connect uh, via remote debug to this Quarkus and in my IDE, I just do this in IntelliJ by saying, well, debug and by I'm adding a run configuration for remote. So I basically say, well, please add a remote um, configuration here. And then I say, in this case, localhost uh, 5005. So that's attaching to a remote JVM. You could argue, well, it's actually not really remote. It just runs in the same machine. Well, but it runs in a Docker container. So a different network. I have to use, um, in this case, localhost with the port that is forwarded to my local host and then I can forward and connect to this um, to this Quarkus instance. Then I say um, run debug and I use this configuration and now I'm connected uh, to my Quarkus application. And now I can actually go and for example, set some breakpoints and then catch the requests uh, when I execute them in my browser or in my command line and then I can go and step through which is already, already very helpful. So for the application that runs in this setup, I can now go and debug and see what's going on. But what's even cooler is if I use my system test, 
while I'm testing the actual, well, test scenario, my business logic, and then I debug something inside my application to see what's actually going on. So for example, if a test fails, I don't, I don't know quite why, I don't know what's going on, then I can even now go there and debug this. So for example, this test, I created that in the video course, uh, I'd have a look at that, is now creating this coffee order. And in order to see what's going on, I can say, okay, while it's creating an order, I actually want to debug that. So I go to a different resource, the orders resource and say, well, where is it? Create order here. Please set a debug um, breakpoint here. And now if you execute that test, I can also catch it right here. So now while um, my debug is still running in my um, IDE, I can start up a second process. Actually, I can run my test here. Also in my IDE, it will start the second process that runs the test. And now the test will just be spinning while um, my debug uh, configuration catches the breakpoint here. And then I can actually go and step through and see what the order looks like and things like that. And uh, while my test is still running and spinning and waiting for results, I can go there and then continue and then my test will be green in this case. So now I have a setup where even within my business logic test scenarios, I can go and see what's going on inside the application and have a look into the setup and also make debug steps to see what's going on. The cool thing is, that all of that is very efficient to use. So once I have this setup that is up and running, I just let it run, it keeps running. And if I change something on the code level that you saw before, if I change the production code, well, it will reload and I see the change immediately there. If I change my test, well, same, I just restart my test and I see the changes immediately being reflected because the test just connects to my application. And in any case, I have a very fast turnaround, whatever I want to do. And yet I have a setup that is a little bit closer to a production setup where I have the proper connection to my backend and to my database. And this is how I can use this development mode in a remote setup, either using Docker containers like here or using something more complex, Docker Compose, Kubernetes, and that works and gives me an efficient setup. Thanks a lot for watching.